Hi, it's Beverly Cole. Welcome to Playing on Purpose. I love to use the right substrate for whatever I'm doing. Pastel paper for pastels, or maybe canvas for mixed media or acrylic painting. But here I am in my RV when I really don't have any kind of a substrate. So I'm gonna make one. I'm using the cover page from a magazine as my base because it's thicker. As a thicker base piece, I'm using some glue stick and this is just a regular school glue stick, but you gotta use a lot. Glue them on one layer after another until you have about five layers or it feels very sturdy to you. Like you could just, you know, pick it up and it won't bend. That's sturdy. After it dries, peel off some of the layers. Go one layer, two layer, three layers, layers deep, just to give you some texture. This is really fun, very satisfying. You can also glue them back on in different spots, which adds more texture. So now, the next step after you lay, layer it is to add some white gesso. Gesso has uh, some kind of a grit. It depends on what brand you buy. It could be some marble dust. It could be just sand, but it makes it kind of gritty and it gives it a good texture. After that, I'm going to start loading my palette, which is made from two very inexpensive trays from the Dollar Tree store and some wax paper and paper towels. Saturate the paper towels. I have another video on this. I'll link it below on how to make this. Now the paints that I brought in my RV are just the primary colors, but not just the regular red, blue, and yellow. It, these are the new, as they call them, primaries. Cyan, magenta, and yellow. These are the colors you're gonna find in your ink, for your printer, or your TV. You'll see those colors. I also bring white and black. That's all I brought with me. Oh wait, I did bring some burnt sienna. <laughs> now here is some magenta. This is a golden paint. These are thick, uh, heavy body acrylics, so they're very thick. Yellow is Sennelier, and I put two dots of yellow because I want one where I'll mix oranges and one where I'll mix greens. The white is by um, Dick Blick, and I don't think I'm going to buy it this way again in a jar. It's just a lot to deal with. I'd rather just squirt it out. But anyway, I use a lot of white, so because of the palette I'm using, it will last a long time. So I'm not worried about having extra. I also have a spray bottle of water, as you might've seen. Now, using a, um, a picture from Pinterest, you can find a lot of pictures on Pinterest or you can go on a morgue file or Pixabay and find pictures to use as reference or just inspiration. Mine is inspiration. I'm working very light and very loose putting very loose looking flowers on here. Not worrying about every little petal, but just looking pretty much at the lights and the darks. As I add the flowers, I notice that the background is kind of fighting with me. Um, I should have made it lighter to begin with, but that's okay. As I add more white to my background, as you'll see, it also helps me to uh, shape my flowers. So here I'm adding more white with my angled brush, and I don't really fuss too much with my brushes. Um, I, I wash them out, but I don't fuss over them. I don't buy expensive brushes. But here you can see I'm filling in the white, and it's helping to lighten up the background, but also shape my flowers. And very, very loose and light. I'm not scrubbing, I'm not rubbing, I'm not worrying about the shape of every flower. It, it also helps if you perhaps, if you wear glasses, take your glasses off or squint and you'll see just the colors and the shapes, no detail. And that's what we want. So after the flower of colors, now I'm getting ready to add some green. And to make the green a little less bright, I add the opposite color on the color wheel, which is red. Just think of Christmas colors, red and green. Think of Easter colors for yellow, yellow and purple. Those are the opposites. And then the other two are blue and orange, which to me are the New York World's Fair colors. <laughs> Here you can see I'm adding some lines. And if the lines are too thick later, you can just take more of the background color and make them thinner using a negative painting 
um, technique. But you can see, it doesn't look absolutely like a photograph of flowers. It gives you the feel of a flower bouquet. It's semi, let's see, it's not abstract, it's semi-abstract or semi-realistic. And now I'm adding green to the background, just adding color where I feel like it and having fun. Just adding green. Some of them, some of the green is darker underneath the flowers. Some of it's lighter. Just looking at the whole picture and just loving each little section of it as I add color. I'm also adding some blue because the blue is kind of like the sky color. Now this is uh, where I spray it with some water and tip it so that the paint pulls off the top of the painting. And then I'm spraying the bottom so that the paint drips off the bottom and it blends as it drips. Then the next thing I do is take it outside to dry. After it dries out on my picnic table at my RV site, I do some strategic tearing. Now as I tear, as it gets to a flower, I clip it off with my scissors you don't have to do this, but I like the idea that it's behind the flower. And then you can tear from the bottom to the top. If it's tearing too much, just glue it back down and tear a skinnier section. Do it a little at a time. The great thing is you can glue it back on. And if you pull off pieces that you want to glue back on later in a different spot, you can do that too. This all adds texture as well as interest. The dark in the background from these torn pieces just adds some lines. So you have a variety of shapes and colors and textures. You can also cut into it like I just did through the paint layer and pull down and cut off. So you have different spots where you've pulled and cut just makes the background so, so interesting. So don't worry if you don't have a canvas or acrylic paper or mixed media paper. If you've got magazines, you're set. And they aren't so easy to come by these days. More and more people are going towards digital magazines. So enjoy what you find. <laughs> and here, look, when you use a little framed uh, shape, just cut out a square rectangle in a piece of cardboard and use it as something to help you crop your pit. Look at that. It's so much fun. Here you can see the layers of my substrate, magazine, cover, and pages. So interesting and beautiful. Here I'm gluing some back on, and I'm using Nouveau glue. Uh, it's, it's a very sticky glue. It really just a few dots, and it just glues on so great. I would suggest staying away from liquidy glues with a lot of water. You could use like a beacon, which is, um, it's, uh, what is that? You know, it's in um, nail polish remover. I uh, can't remember what it's called right now, but that's the base of that. So no water and uh, a very sticky glue, maybe an Aileen's really sticky glue to glue these pieces back on. Now, if you wanted to, you could cover this, coat it with some matte medium or some gloss medium or gloss gel. I just like the textures. I love to run my hands over the layers. It's just so satisfying. So I hope that this has been interesting for you. I hope that you'll try this. Pile some pages on top of each other and start ripping. You might discover that you really, really love this. It's so much fun. Thanks for visiting. See you next time. Bye.